curling up like a ball in the back seat, I wake up. I mutter the code as I wake up, committing it to memory. L0129. No matter what, I can't afford to forget it. It's our clue to finding Licht. I sit down, noticing the sun quickly rising for a new day. Another world without Licht in the real world. I promise I'll find you. Mm. Subaru stays quiet, yawning without a sound. The past few mornings have had us waking up in a panic. However, this time we s all sit motionless for several minutes. But the silence isn't awkward. We're all just tired. The rays of sun come shining through the windows, bathing us in warm light. I need a stretch. He opens the door and steps out. Subaru does the same, opening the door on the other side. I opt to open the car window, letting some fresh air in. The boys do their thing, flexing their limbs as I view them from where I sit inside the car. For a moment, it looks like we're friends on a road trip, but in reality... Isn't it stuffy in there? Subaru pops his head into the window, letting his elbow rest on the frame. Nah, I'm okay. I break into a smile when I see him staring at me through the window like a cute little animal with those almond-shaped eyes. I got this space all to myself, so I'm not too stiff. Subaru smiles sweetly back at me, as if comforted by my smile. Feels nice out here. Come on. Alright. Subaru steps back so I can open the door. Ah. The coolness of the morning air hits my body, and I instantly feel the chill on my skin. Just then, a car approaches. Oh no, mystery. Hmm? Ray gets back into our lane, minding the car as it slows down. It's stopping. What could someone else be doing here deep in the mountains? There's nothing here except an abandoned orphanage. Their windows roll down, revealing two men inside. Hey, what are you doing out here? Oh, we're just doing some research on... Just a little exploration. We were kind of dared to go and explore the old orphanage. Huh? It's the reason why Father was assassinated. It was supposed to be kept a secret. It's best we don't mention that we're here to search around the orphanage. Sibidu quietly tells me. You mean these men could be involved in trying to cover up the human experiments? Subaru nods. Just as I'm casually thinking about how cool Ray is, we're quickly picking up on the fact that these guys are here to keep the truth about Bluebells a secret. Ray questions them back. By the way, what are you gentlemen doing out here? With those work clothes on, you don't look like you're here for a silly teenage dare. Ray's probing question instantly puts me on edge, my joints locking up. The countenances of both men suddenly change. Oh, um, no, we're just, uh... No, we, we were just hired to look after this building. He looks stumped as he signals to the other man. We were just asking because y'all look like you're in a pickle. We thought your car might have broken down. The car needs some fixing. We got some tools back here. Thank you for the gesture, but we're fine. Well, that's good, then. It's not safe around here, so y'all best be going. We'll stay here a little longer. We came all this way, you see. Can't let you do that. It may be abandoned, but this here is private property, you hear? We could have y'all prosecuted for trespassing. Ray, we should probably get out of here for now. Oh no, we don't intend on going inside. We we're just going to look at the outside. There's nothing illegal about that, right? If you gentlemen have work to do, by all means, head inside. Rest assured, we won't get in your way. Ray gives the men his winning smile. The men grind their teeth with a hint of frustration. Is something the matter? It's your job, correct? We, uh, got some other business to take care of. Come on, let's go. Yeah, right. With that, the two men leave. Very suspicious. They definitely have something to do with the orphanage. Right? <laughs> right? They can't do their work just because we're around? They're either here to cover up Silas's murder or take care of the body. Take care of the body? Ray spreads his arms over the roof and yawns. Anyone up for breakfast? He must have suspected that I'm hungry. We get in the car and leave the orphanage for now. We pull into a diner on the road for a meal. I've been so out of it, I actually forgot about eating. I watch as Subaru takes a seat beside me while Ray settles down with his food across from us. Is that all you're gonna eat? Ray points to my plate with his spoon. Hmm? I stare down at my food choices. Apple slices, French toast, and a carton of milk. I don't want to feel too full. Especially not with what we're doing. I take a bite out of my food and swallow it as they continue for me as they wait for me to continue. I just don't feel like eating a lot these days. With everything that's happening, 
I feel like my stomach's been turned inside out. Stress. I nod, looking at Ray as he sips on his orange juice. I'm relieved you seem better than you were yesterday, Ray. He nods a bit hesitantly. I guess I just put my foot in my mouth, huh? Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Ray devours his first pancake, looking at Subaru with a confused expression. Look at the amount of sugar you're dumping in that. What? Keep at it and you're gonna get diabetes. What, are you worried about me? Ray swallows his food and then points a spoon at Subaru across the table. Coffee and sugar are good in healthy amounts. But honestly, if you want energy and a stronger immune system, you better drink your vitamin C. He swipes his glass and drinks his fruit juice. Ugh. He exclaims with a sharp breath, his throat vibrating. Like this. Vibrating? Like swallowing? Caffeine keeps you alert, but it doesn't help your body repair itself. Wait, are you even listening to me? I watch Subaru down half of his coffee in just one gulp. Whoa. Then he sets the cup down, licking, licking his lips. You were saying? Ray shakes his head. Ah, these two. I feel like somehow they've gotten closer. I bite into my French toast, letting the flavor settle on my tongue. Despite my appetite, the flavor is richer because we're eating together. We go back to where it all began. I stand before the stairs leading to the basement. I peer into the pitch-black abyss. The eerie, screeching howl of the wind gives me the creeps. Subadu takes out a flashlight. The steps are covered in dust and moss, but the staircase still seems intact. I'll go first. No, let me. Subaru looks surprised for a moment, but immediately forces out a smile and hands Ray the flashlight. You don't need to worry about me. I'm perfectly fine. I'm... I'm not worried. Shut up and get moving. He is concerned about us. You should stay between us and Risa. You should stay between us, Risa. Gotcha. The middle is the safest place to be. Alright, I can do this. I encouraged myself as we slowly descend down the stairs. Feeling tense, we carefully make our way down the steps. Some steps have water pooling in them, making them slippery. The stains on the walls are also creeping me out. I try my best to avoid touching them. Each of the stains are starting to look like the blood stains we found last time. The air is thick with familiar scent of blood. Resisting the urge to puke, I swallowed hard and trudged forward. In an effort to take my mind off my putrid surroundings, I try thinking about the past. We were forbidden to wander too far, and there are parts of the building that we weren't supposed to be in. Ray got scolded several times for trying to sneak into the basement. I wonder if he remembers that. And finally, one day, Father invited us to the basement, the place we were most curious about. It was scary. Despite my curiosity, I remember how terrified I was. But at least the lift was there. Yes, he held my hand all the way down. It's okay. Don't be scared. I'll protect you. I'm gonna rescue you from the darkness. And that eventually became the day we lost our memories. When I think about it now, the darkness he was talking about wasn't the dark basement. It was my dark past. Lift is okay, right? I'm sure I'll be able to see him again. I clench my fists as if to try and push back my mem my worries. Lift. I've been thinking. Subaru says out of the blue, pushing my daydream away from my mind. The monster should have showed up last night. But it didn't. Yeah, I've been wondering about that too. He's been trapped in his own head for 13 years. And with what Silas Ackerman said about him, he had a lot of happy memories. Does that mean Lick doesn't have any traumatic memories? No bad memories means no monster coming after you, it seems. Our awful memories were erased, but Lick's was wiped out entirely. Wait a second. Why haven't I ever really thought about how the monster looks and behaves until now? Did you guys notice the monster? We've all had demons inside us, but they didn't come in any specific forms. What do you mean? I mean, think about it. Maybe I've watched too many TV shows, but a lot of times fears take shape into something distinct. But because we're not afraid of the same things, the monster should be different for each of us. But the nightmare chasing us is one and the same. Yes, it's that big blob with too many limbs and multiple faces. 
Then maybe it's a combination of all our trauma lumped together. I nod firmly. The places from the nightmare all woven from our past. It makes sense that the monster would be the same way. That's true. Could be an amalgamation of all the things we fear. And maybe it's so heavy with burden that it's shaped irregularly. If so, then that would explain why it gets weaker every time we deal with our memories. The monster gets smaller and smaller when a part of that it, that is, the trauma of the test subjects, is restored back to their memories. If we can face our trauma and overcome it, the monster will go away. We went through a lot as kids. Putting that together can be hell for anyone. But we reach the door to where Lyft was kept in the nightmare. As long as we carry that weight together, we can find a way to make it through. We arrive in front of the same room where we first found Lyft in a nightmare world. Yesterday, the door was locked and we couldn't get it open, but now... I slowly close my eyes. Just before I reopen them, I recall what Lyft told me. Even if we're in separate worlds, we'll always be connected. I'll find you, Lyft. I exhale, slowly open my eyes, and approach the door. The code is... L0129. I cautiously enter the code. The sound of the buttons echoes through the gloomy hallway. Please work. We wait a moment. The door clicks open. We smile at one another, breathing a sigh of relief. Good job, Risa. Ray gives me a firm pat on the head. Alright, let's go in. Let's put an end to this and get free from this nightmare world. Let's do it. We nod at each other and step into the room. The records room is cold. Subaru flicks the switch on and the fluorescent sputters for a moment before casting a dim light. That's better. What? Who said that? A vast space of paperwork welcomes us. How are we ever going to read through all of this? Let's split up. Start with the oldest ones. Roger that. I make my way along the bookcases. The hardbound books are arranged by year, so at least it's easy to know where to start. I guess I'll start looking at records from 13 years before the orphanage closed down. Oh. My eyes look up to the top shelf where the earliest records are. They're pretty high up. I can't reach them. I recall when Subaru helped me get a book down from the shelf in the library. I consider getting him to help me, but I can't bother him now. We don't have any time to waste. I find a ladder beside the shelf. Is this safe? But I have no time to think things through, so I take a chance and step up the wooden ladder. It creaks, but it gets the job done. As long as I distribute my weight right, I should be able to keep it from breaking. I run my hand along the books. Oh, this one? Found anything, Risa? What? Oh! Ah! I feel the pull of gravity plunging me down. I'm falling! Whoa, hey! Anticipating the pain, I squeeze my eyes shut. I brace for impact, but instead of the cold, hard floor, I land on something warm. I slowly open my eyes. Warm? What in the world? I find myself on top of Ray. I lift my upper body and see Ray's handsome face. He caught me. You okay? Uh, yeah. Not knowing how to move away from him, I stay put, eyes darting nervously. How to move away from him? Ch just roll over or get up. But then Ray just laughs, his hand reaching toward the small of my back. I've kissed you boys already. You've gotten awfully bold, haven't you? What are you talking about? You just caught me from falling. It's not like I did this on purpose. I try to get up, but Ray holds me firmly in place. What are you doing? Let me go. What? You aren't even going to thank me? Thank you. And? And what? Well, I specifically went out of my way to save you. How about a thank you kiss? Uh, that's, that's not appropriate. Huh? What are you talking about? Don't tease me like that. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Ray gives me a brief mischievous smile before his expression turns serious. But honestly, I really do want to kiss you right now. There's a lump in my chest. Ray looks up at me, eyes dreamy. That's... This angle is making me see things differently. I feel myself getting redder the more he stares at me. Risa. His steady gaze, the way he calls my name. 
It's like everything about him right now is telling me how he feels about me. What do I do? I've kissed you boys already. Fuck. I can't do this again. Ah, my heart and mind are overwhelmed. I don't know why, but I instinctively shake myself loose from his grip. I hurry to get up, but my feet tangle around each other, making me land on my butt. Ow. Jeez, this is why I can't leave you alone. He grumbles, taking my hand to help me stand. You're such a klutz. What would you do without me? I'm not! He cuts me off, poking me in the forehead. Ray chuckles, leaving me alone. I go through several books, starting from the lower shelf this time. I can't risk falling again. I hope there's something here. But after a while, I leave the area without finding anything useful. Ugh, even if we narrowed it down, there's still so much left. I wonder how Subaru and Ray are doing. I walk over to the boxes stacked along the way, looking for my friends. Subaru, Ray, but neither of them answer. Hmm. I decide to go. I decide where to go next, but the flap of a box distracts me. I draw closer, wanting to know what's inside. What's this? A notebook. I turn it around to look at the front. My heart skips a beat. On the front cover, it says Licht's Diary. Licht! My hand shakes, hesitant to open the journal. It's bad manners to read someone's diary. No matter how badly I want to read it, I don't want to invade a young boy's privacy. I turn the journal in my hands as I try to decide what to do. But something slips out between the pages. Oh no! I pick it up. It's a letter. Teresa. It's addressed to me? The image of Licht as a little boy smiling at me comes to mind. This letter is what Licht has been wanting to tell me. Could this be what he wanted to say before the experiment changed everything? I bite my lip. It's okay to read this, right? It's for me, after all. Read the letter! Exhaling gently, I carefully open the envelope. I look at the sloppy handwriting on the tattered old paper. You certainly can't call it neat by any standard. I feel like I'm holding on to proof of Licht's existence. By the time you read this, I don't know if I'll be with there with you. Ah. It sounds like something a person would write before they die. It's painful to imagine what state of mind Lick was in when he wrote this as a kid. It's been a few months since we first met. I read the letter, and with each sentence, I feel like I can hear Lick's voice. You've always had a sad look in your eyes, and I've always wondered what I can do to make you smile. You're so much more beautiful when you smile, Risa. And I always want to see you happy. I feel an ache in my chest as I read the the messy words. Oh, I feel an ache in my chest as I read the messy words a young boy wrote for me. That's why, when Father said he found a way to make you feel better, I didn't hesitate to follow him. Ah, he's talking about the experiment. Father said this will be his first time doing this. And I'm a little scared, but I still want to see it through. Because even though we play a lot, even though we laugh a lot, there are still times when your eyes feel like they won't sparkle anymore. And it hurts me. A lift. It hurts, because I like you a lot. And I feel like I can't do anything for you. But I promise. I'll help take all your fears away. I'll do what I can to make your happiness a reality. I said at the beginning of this letter that I don't know if I'll be there with you, but... The experiment will definitely succeed, and I will wake up. So please... The words, wait for me, are crossed out. It's replaced with, don't forget about me, enjoy your life. This was Lick's final message before the experiment. My tears fall from my eyes, dropping onto the paper like rain. I'm speechless. I feel my lungs being squeezed. My mouth opens, gasping for air. It hurts. Licht. He knew what the risks were, but he still continued with the experiment. He did it for me. My hands go limp, the letter falling to the ground. I need to find him, before it's too late. Time passes as we go through each file we find. There's still so many. I'm not sure how much we've covered, but it seems never-ending. Risa, come here for a sec. Subaru pops up from the other side, waving his hand. Look at these files. He takes out a folder filled with paperwork. We scan through it together. This one's a check! That's the governor's seal. This amount is insane, and they used it to fund Silas Ackerman's experiment? We flip another page and find even more specifics. Bluebell's Orphanage, founded by Silas Ackerman. He really is father. Look at this. This is a picture of all of us. The caption says, Subjects. Classified, Bluebell's Orphans, 
to undergo trauma cleansing and new research. The purpose of the experiment was to erase the traumatic memories from young children and implant positive ones to help them live better lives. This will allow them to create a better world. Subaru and I look at each other. This is all the info we've been looking for, Risa. Wait, there's more! Trauma cleansing fails, Silas Ackerman and hot water. The subjects of the experiment lost their traumatic memories, but the experiment failed to create positive ones. Lick! <sighs> Fuck. Licht Ackerman. Licht. Licht. That gets harder every time I do it. Licht Ackerman. Silas Ackerman's own son is said to be in a coma. See? My coma theory from the very beginning. I don't know when I first came up with it, but I did come up with it. <laughs> My jaw drops at what I just read. Licht is in a coma? If he's in a coma, then that means he didn't die after the experiment. Then is he still... Is it safe for me to assume that he's still in the real world? Even if he's alive, his muscles will be, like, super weak. Even if he wakes up. Because that's 13 years in a coma, for crying out loud. Jeez. It can't hurt to hope, right? I clutch the paper in my hands. Licht, I will find you. Oh my goodness. I only have three boys left. Oh jeez. And two of them have kissed me. Fuck. Oh. Oh. Until next time.